This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S1 Ison and WTF Professional Science. Seriously, bro. Part 46. Papa's got a new bag of tricks. NASA changed the orbit squared. I didn't have time to finish this one before they changed the orbit again. All right, let's let this play out. I had not planned this properly. Mayday, mayday, all hands on deck. Comet Ison will solve the global warming problem as the goalposts change again in the name of learning. Professional science argues with itself and disagrees on Ison's orbit. All right, let's get you updated on the latest news. What we'll be covering in this episode, it'll be a good ice age. A single photograph freaks me out. Ison looks massive. It's all relative. And string is the thing that connects quantum and relative. Quantitate and qualitative bitches! Ain't nobody be a bitches, except for the puppies that are girls. And they're just bitches naturally, you know what I'm saying? That won't make it in. Okay, I should stop now. And wise brown dwarf, neutron star, scientist Amy Mainzer thaws from her deep freeze on Comet Ison communications with the public. And that's causing some personal, emotional sublimation. And I just want to say for the record that my crush on Amy Mainzer is harmless. It's harmless, man. I got a thousand crushes. And she has just pulled the football from you, bro. All right, Charlie Brown, get better taste of women. Now let's go. Professional science. NASA's not talking, but they are communicating. And their communique is crazy. All right. Professional science is confused. And that is not a matter of personal opinion that would technically be the term for it used in courts of law everywhere i do believe now it's been an interesting john Kerry flip-flop all along because originally nasa's orbit or origin was estimated to be unknown or not available and a then nasa came out with a statement saying the comet ison's orbit was ten thousand years they pegged it at ten thousand years i laughed when that happened of course, I made a video. Part 18, 10,000 year timeline. NASA not only put the Hubble on it for multiple photographs. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, NASA. NASA has now put out a timeline, which is great. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. But the thing is about this timeline is they said 10,000 years ago. They put a date on it. Like, all right, yeah, this thing is 10,000 years old. Or it started its journey towards Earth 10,000 years ago. Which is weird, man. Like, all right, here's the deal. How do they know? Like, 10,000 years... It only took ice in basically one year to cross over our entire solar system. I think it's only taken like two or three months for it to go from Jupiter to Mars. And it's only taken like three or four months to go from Mars to the sun. So if it been on a 10,000 year journey, where the hell did it come from, man? What caused it to make a 10,000 year journey towards the sun? That is important to know. Come on, come on, come on. Get happy now. Oh, yeah. Sidebar, NASA timeline, a dangerous journey. A comet's journey is perilous and violent. Okay, if it's one year journey across the solar system was perilous and violent, how were the other 9,999 years of this journey? A breezy, easy cakewalk? I like cake and walking. 10,000 years, man, I'm pretty pleased with cherries on top. See the data, math, and scientific papers that led to this approximate conclusion? 10,000 years equals X plus Y. Hey, if you put another bar over that equal sign, it looks like sexy. <laughs> I could use a date i could use a date okay seriously bro what is the x and the y or just the x i'd like to know yeah i tried to figure out the math find the math but i failed i don't like to fail i think nasa's copying me a couple episodes ago i put a timeline up and, and then they put a timeline up and i screenshotted it so it happened and i'm glad i screenshotted their 10,000 year orbit because eventually then like a week or two ago one of my favorite shills with hydra heads with no social skills. It was like, where's your proof that NASA said it was 10,000 years? And something went off my head like, uh-oh. It was like, yeah, dude, where's your proof that NASA says it's a 10,000 year orbit? So I double checked. So I went to the page where I had screenshotted it before and lo and behold, the 10,000 year orbit was gone. And NASA changed it. I was like, WTF, man. Well, a couple days later, changed the JPL orbit from NA to 400,000 years, which seems weird. So NASA is now saying that common Ison is just your basic average normal 400,000 year plus comet the 400,000 year orbital so it's no longer hyperbolic it's just your normal half a million year orbit i'm not arguing with them i just want to know how they came up to this fact 
conclusion. I'm very fascinated. Very, very fascinated. And hey, you know what? Being a smart dumbass who learns from his mistakes, knowing that NASA never told us how they came up with that 10,000 year orbit, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna tell us how they came up with the 400,000 year orbit either. So I digress and move on. Really, nobody knows. And if somebody really does know, I don't think they're telling us. You are free to believe and feel whatever you like. All right, all right, all right. For the moment, let's go ahead and describe now. Professional science is a hydra. Professional science. Though hydras usually have negative connotations, we're not doing that in this case. We're just using it as an example. Let's say the MPC is one of their heads, the Minor Planet Center, and the JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, is another one of their heads. Well, the Minor Planet Center determined that the eccentricity of Ison is to be 1.0000019, which means that it's hyperbolic, and when it shoots past the sun, it's going to shoot out of our solar system, never to be seen again. Well, the Jet Propulsion Lab says that it has an eccentricity of 0.9999977109551715 exclamation point, which means it's a normal comet. Its orbit is closed and it'll come back in about 400,000 years. NASA changed the orbit squared. I didn't have time to finish this one before they changed the orbit again. All right, I did not plan this properly. This episode is to be continued because NASA screwed it up by just now changing the orbit to like 580,000 years or something like that. And the thing was, I didn't get a chance to screenshot the 400,000 year orbit. So I had to go to Dabu 7's channel and screenshot it to show you. It's interesting that they're changing it so much. And I must say that back in the day on GLP, I bet anybody 100 bucks that the orbit would change. And they were like, no, 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 we got these things locked down. I was like, no, 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 you don't. Um, so who knows what is going on? Maybe they will explain the perturbations. Anyway, get to work on part two. That'll be out tonight. Crap. Way to go. Okay, I was in the middle of this video about when they changed the orbit to 400,000 years, and then they changed it again. So I guess they couldn't wait until I finished my video, eh? Anywho, I'm gonna wrap this one up to be continued for sure. We did not even have time to look at these diagrams that someone said they made for me, which I was extremely flattered with because I saw them ahead of time, and it freaked me out a little. But then that person said they made them for me, so I was flattered. Okay, later.